Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian from USA.Patriot.Cards. It has been a minute since I've been able to, to get on here and talk to you guys. Um, man, just been busy with baseball. Uh, got sick for a couple. It's been like 10 days now. Upper respiratory, chest. Uh, doctor says it's just a virus. Um, but damn. Is lingering. Uh, anyway, just been just been hecka busy. Uh, so hot down here in Texas, man. Um, but I've been managing to keep busy in the card space, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, let's see, July 13th through the 15th, 16th uh, for the next Dallas show uh, that's coming up. And um, yeah, just been watching, watched a little bit of the card, the what was it, Hobby Palooza or whatever. Watched uh, Pepino Man do his thing. Um, there are guys that get on and start a video and they'll say, Well, this is video number 65. Can't believe it's 65 videos already. And then like two, three videos. This is video number 69. Can't believe I've already done 69 videos. Some guys even break their content down into seasons. Season 2, episode 4. If you want to uh, go back to season one and revisit, now I'm not picking on those guys. It's just funny to me. Like, really? Seasons? Episodes? This is another in the long line of videos on my channel. No seasons. No episode count. Just um, when I can, I like to get up here and spit some stuff. And when I can't, I, I, I don't. Um... I don't know. Teach their own. Right? That's that's the bottom line. Here's a small mail day. Uh, I'm a Royals guy. Royals, Rangers. Um, but I grew up, I was born in, in uh, Kansas City, basically, right outside. Some of my eye. And um, so I've always liked the Royals. Was always a Royals over Cardinals guy growing up. George Brett, Bo Jackson. Kevin Seitzer, um, you know, Danny Tartable back in the day. Anyway, um, it's really easy to PC Royals, guys, other than wit. Of course, I do have a sizable wit collection. Um, and Bobby Witt's not doing too bad. I mean, compared to Julio Rodriguez, which, you know, that's kind of like the Trey Young, Luka Doncic. They came up together, and they'll probably always be, you know, compared to each other. Um, you hear you hear about Julio having a down season, right? And then you hear really you don't hear anything about uh, Bobby Wood Jr. Um, but he's having a pretty good season. I think he's having a better season than Julio Rodriguez. So um, still, both guys are hitting under 250. And I don't know if the game's changed and like launch angle and uh, just. Guys, every guy throwing 95 plus now nowadays. But it seems like 250 is like the new 280. But um, anyway, I picked this up. Uh, Drew Waters. Um, he is a, let's see, I think he was like a sec, early second round pick back in 2017. Played at the University of Georgia. Um, was a local draft by the uh, Braves and then got traded to uh, the Kansas City Royals, but I don't remember for whom. But uh, he's a good player. Um, you know, this is strictly a PC pickup. Uh, there's probably no long-term investability here, but it was like 60 bucks. Uh, first Bowman, all his, uh, all his autos tend to be a little streaky. So I just, I wanted to get a nice little refractor just to have. He'll go next to my uh, my Nick uh, Prado and my uh, MJ Melendez. I need to get a Vinny Pasquantino. Um, but, yeah, just a nice little uh, Royals pickup. I wanted to show you, I, I have a bunch of um, a bunch of these one touches. And I wanted to show you guys um, a little secret now. A lot of you guys probably know this already. Some might not. Um, I've I've known about this, but then I finally had to just track 
track this down. Let me stick this in the PSA sleeve real quick. Um, of course, for for your slabs, um, you're gonna you're gonna want to get the um, you know the PSA or BGS sleeves. Um, always cover your slabs um, and your one touches. There's nothing more frustrating than a than a uh, cloudy or scratched up case. But um, there's my Drew Water. So um, for these guys, you know, I have these in team bags. And you take them out and you look and see that, I mean, there's a little scratch there, but most of these um, are really nice and clean. Uh, one, these one touches. And it makes, it just makes a big difference. Okay, here's an example. See this? Yeah, and this one too. Uh, these are superior fit sleeves, okay? So uh, this is what it would look like with just a team bag. You see lots of just extra, you know, material. And this is what it looks like with a superior fit sleeve. You almost can't tell that you have something on there. Um, now, you can order these if you just Google superior fit I ordered a bunch about a week ago and transferred as many of the uh, one touches I had over. They have so they have this. This is for thirty-five to fifty-five point. I'm gonna need something bigger uh, for these. So um, they have they have something for just about every okay seventy-five to one hundred should work and so uh, if you've got if you've got a I think this one is already sleeved let me try if you've got a one touch up so that'll just sneak on there so see how see how snug that is and you push it down here's another little tip when you're dealing with lots of these uh, sleeves, just make you a little tape catch. So you just kind of fold, fold them back like that. And then you take these little things that are constantly um, getting in the way and you just stick them on there like that. And then boom, now I have something that looks a hundred times better, right? Than, than this. Um, all right, so a couple updates um, just on what I've been up to hobby-wise. Um, I did sell the green Josh Allen, um, which was a pop two uh, at the time I sold it. Found a collector that uh, wasn't just going to run and, and, and flip that card for a couple hundred bucks, and so that was nice. To be able to, to find somebody who's actually going to keep that card, um, that makes a difference. That means something to me. Um, when a guy just wants to find, you know, a deal and isn't really after the card as much as they are the margin, I don't know. It just kind of turns me off a little bit. I'd still sell to somebody like that. I guess you, you could call them a flipper, but it's way easier for me to give a good deal to a guy that uh, wants the card and not the margin, um, if you know what I mean by that. Um, and those guys are those guys are getting harder and harder to find. But I did I did find a buyer for the green Josh Allen at uh, seventy three hundred is what uh, he he gave me on that. I was happy to get that. Uh, and then I, uh, I sold this lot of baseball here just yesterday. I gave somebody a hell of a deal, um, on this stuff, but I'll tell you why I moved this. Um, all this stuff you see here is what I would call, uh, stale. Mm -hmm. And it's all nice stuff. I mean... I think it's all, uh, there's only like one or two base cards in here. It's all either a refractor or short print. 
uh, <clears throat> that Kyle Tucker is a pop seven, believe it or not, and a ten. Um, and the, but you know Kyle Tucker, Houston Astros, man, the Houston Astros collectability has just fallen off a cliff ever since the cheating stuff. People just don't want to touch him. Um, but Kyle Tucker is a good young player. He's 26 now, though. Um, he probably has a lot of great years left in him. But the hobby is ready to move on from him. Um, that used to be about a thousand dollar card. It's probably cut in half at least. Uh, from that <clears throat> again, it's a pop seven. So if you're looking, if you're a Kyle Tucker guy or if you're a Houston the Astros guy, that's not an easy card to find in that grade, the refractor 10. Uh, but he's hitting 280 and has 10 bombs. That's not going to get anybody's attention. Cabrian Hayes. Now, Cabrian Hayes is actually slashing like 360 over the past month, maybe. I think in, in June he hit 360. But He's got like four or five bombs. O'Neill Cruz is the guy, and uh, what's his name? Um, Brian um, Reynolds. Brian Reynolds. Uh, those two guys are the are the you know the heartbeat and the soul of the Pirates. Now uh, O'Neill Cruz is out for the year, but uh, Key Brian got off to a hot start. First game uh, in his MLB career was in Chicago uh, against the Cubs, and he hit a home run on to Waverly. And so he got out uh, to a really hot start, was a, uh, a, da a hobby darling for, I don't know, a couple months. Uh, son of Charlie Hayes, has a Major League uh, Baseball pedigree. Uh, two refractors uh, there, one I graded, uh, but uh, those do about two hundred bucks, uh, and those are harder to find uh, than you than you think. I I don't know if people just aren't grading their Cabrian Hayes or whatever, but again, nobody's clamoring to find a Cabrian Hayes. Cody Bellinger. Oh man, I punted. Finally punted on my Cody Bellinger's that purple. I traded a LeBron downtown, which was raw when I traded it later got a PSA 10 so I got absolutely cooked <clears throat> on that deal uh, for the quad nine five purple uh, and then the uh, base with the gold Mike Baker diamond uh, I think those are about two to two fifty a piece there the Harrison Bader first Bowman I just picked this up the Jim mint plus I picked it up because I was trying to you know make a make a Harrison Bader play just given that he's the center fielder for the Yankees. And <clears throat> on the right of that, you'll see the hands up. You'll see the um, the Bowman Chrome non-first rookie. And that one's a short print out of 25. But <clears throat> I just, you know, I'm just trying to pare down my, my collection into guys that I either like or, you know, uh, have some sort of um, belief in. So, and then Harrison Bader isn't that guy. So, uh, he, he went and then, uh, Alec Bohm. Now I didn't do too bad on Alec Bohm. I bought Alec Bohm, um, relatively, uh, cheap, not, not super cheap, but on, on the way up as opposed to at the very top. Um, and this was the one card that I kept. Now he got off to a scorching start this year. Um, and I sold everything I had. I had a white sparkle. I think I had a couple refractors, a couple base, uh, first Bowman tens. Those all went quick. And then this one was hanging around and I'm just like, I'm done with this, this kid. He's, I think he's hurt right now or he's, or, I don't know. He's not doing anything. He's definitely, um, grinded to a complete halt. Uh, Jared Kelnick, man, he got super, super hot too. Got off of most of his stuff was keeping this refractor. He's a bomb. <laughs> He's a straight bomb. If you're still holding your Jared Kelnicks, you missed, you literally missed the boat. He's uh, reverted back to the, the strikeout king that he, that he is. Uh, and, and once you, you know, as a young player, once you have that, um, once you have that run um, where people, so you have the post, you have the, uh, the, the, the like call up or the pre uh, call up highs, right? Uh, Kelnick was a major prospect uh, for the Mets, and they traded him, I believe, in the uh, Robinson Cano deal. But before anybody saw him play in the bigs, you know, he was uh, he was a guy people were after, uh, and that was a big card. Um, that was a four-digit card, easy. Um, 
and then he and then he gets traded and he gets called up and he struggles. So he all his prices dipped and they dipped pretty low. He once was a good buy. Uh, then he gets called up uh, last year again, struggled a little bit, and then this year he came out on fire. And that was when everybody was looking for Kelnick. Uh, and so um, that's that's when you were supposed to sell Kelnick. And if you're still holding on to a Kelnick, I'd get off of it as soon as possible. The Mariners, are, Mariners aren't going anywhere this year. He just can't stop striking out. Uh, Julio seems to be disinterested right now in baseball. He's struggling. So uh, Kelnick was in this lot. And then the Vladdy Kaboom rookie, PSA 10 grade card, just unlicensed and uninspired. I mean, people just don't care about baseball kabooms so and then the the one of one collection uh heritage clubhouse collection correa bregman again the astros just don't do anything correa is stale as they come so is bregman so what you're looking at here is ultimately a lot that i sold for 2k um probably comp wise you're looking at about a 3100 dollar uh, lot um, and so when you take 2K for it, you're, you're selling it about 65% comps. <clears throat> and uh, normally when you've got first Bowmans and PSA 10s and refractors and game use patch autos, and you don't want to take a 65% um, deal. But all this, like I said, all this stuff is super stale. Uh, he, he, the guy that bought it probably make a couple hundred bucks on it. If one of these guys pops, maybe make more than that. But I was just ready to be done. And so I did. I moved that lot. So the Josh Allen Green and this lot have been two of my um, my sales recently. So sitting here with a grip of cash, wondering what to do with it. To the, you know, to this point, I've been able to keep my powder dry. I have been tempted on Corbin Carroll and Ellie De La Cruz. Man, um, Ellie De La Cruz is was hotter than the sun. Um, and since he hit that uh, uh, cycle, he is, I think, 0 for 13 with 7 or 8 Ks. So that's the book on him. Um, he's going to be like this, you know, up and down, up and down. Uh, it's the wrong time to buy him, obviously, right now. You're still paying cycle prices. you got to wait on him. But at the same time, I do believe in him. And when he came up, the Reds won 11 out of 12 games. They're in first place. They're hanging on by like half a game. I think they're going to be in the race all year long. It's going to be exciting. Cincinnati is going to be <clears throat> supporting that team the rest of the year. I expect Ellie to have a, a big year. <clears throat> you know, if you can get one of his cards um, during like a dip, <clears throat> I would advise you to do so if you like the player. I do. Um, but... Uh, He's still got to come down a little bit. Corbin Carroll, dude might win the MVP as a rookie. I mean, he's just unbelievable. He had a bomb last night. He's hitting 300. Arizona is sneaky, good. Christian Walker's out there. Um, they got a good team. Fast, young, power um, out in Arizona. I like Corbin Carroll, but then you just look at him and you think, you know, will he be somebody that, that ends up, you know, being a good play. And um, I think he's going to continue to put numbers up. But <clears throat> you look at a guy like that and you see, I see um, Mookie Betts. You know, that's the type of uh, body he has. And Mookie Betts has been an MVP. I mean, Mookie Betts is amazing. But, um, you know, how excited would you be to go get a Mookie Betts uh, first Bowman refractor 10 right now? Would you pay 2K for it? Uh, you know, maybe. But I don't think that. I mean, what would it take for a Mookie Betts run? Another World Series, another MVP? Um, I don't know. I mean, if I was in Arizona and I was a I was a Diamondbacks guy, I would have a Corbin Carroll. I have a nice Corbin Carroll. I like the black. The first Bowman Blacks out of 75. Nice color match. But, I mean, outside of being a Diamondbacks guy, I, I, mean, I don't know. I just don't see... Uh, I just don't see there being a, a, a hobby crush... Uh, on Corbin Carroll. Otani, holy Jesus. Um, I always talk about being afraid to uh, 
afraid to move off Pat Mahomes completely because I don't want to sit and watch Pat Mahomes games and cringe every time he, you know, throws a touchdown or wins another Super Bowl. That's where I'm at with Otani. Now, I didn't have anything like super crazy, but I had a first Bowman 9 auto and the, the pitching, the true uh, first first card. And then I had a 10 um, uh, first Bowman auto and I moved both of them and uh, they've doubled. Both of them have doubled since I moved them. And it's just, he hit two home runs last night, struck out 10 guys on the mound. We went and saw him um, do this. <laughs> That was the other night when they were playing the Rangers. My son told me at the beginning of the <clears throat> baseball season he wanted to go to two games. He wanted to see um, the Yankees win uh, when uh, Nestor Cortez is pitching, and he wanted to see Otani pitch. And we, we did both, uh, so that, that's been fun. But, uh, yeah, Otani just – he's so special that I think it's still – he's still a good buy, if you can believe that. And he's got the international appeal. I mean, he's he's he might be the best baseball player to ever play the game. Um, so I mean, that's pretty. <laughs> that those are some serious words when you're when you're saying that. Um, do we believe in the quarterbacks? Uh, I feel like there's a tree of quarterbacks. Um, Mahomes is the star on top, but uh, you know, you start looking at guys like Kyler Murray, uh, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, <clears throat> Dak Prescott, for, uh, more or less. Um, Jared Goff, uh, Trevor Lawrence, to an extent, he's still pretty young. But you start looking at these guys and you wonder, you know, um, how much weight can this tree support? Um, how much baked in um, <clears throat> um, possibilities can this tree support uh, before branches start to snap and quarterbacks start to fall off? Um, Joe Burrow's on that tree. He's right under Mahomes. Um so be careful as you, as you um, contemplate quarterback purchases. <clears throat> I think, you know, let's take the, let's take the top six quarterbacks, um, Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, uh, Lawrence, uh, Herbert, <clears throat> uh, who else? Um, Justin Fields, maybe. Um, and, and, and you can think, Okay, one of these guys is going to stay flat. One of these is guys is going to run, and I think the rest of these guys are going to are going to have a like falling. Um, and you just want to be on the right side of whatever purchase you decide to make. You want to look and start looking at NFL schedules now. Start seeing who's got a favorable schedule for the first four or five weeks. Who has a chance to get off to a four and one, five and one start? Pick up a card. If Justin Herbert's got a, uh, a weak schedule, it might be a good time right now to pick up a Herbert and then flip it. But I think aside from Mahomes and maybe Trevor Lawrence, the quarterbacks at the, oh, Tua. Tua's another guy uh, on that tree. Um, you got to be careful because the hobby is consolidating down into the best, the best of the best. Now, that doesn't mean your Josh Allens and your Tua's are, aren't going to sell, but it just means that if you if you put in 2K on a Josh Allen card right now and he gets off to a, you know, a 4-3 and three start or let's say a 5-3 and three start, whatever it is, if he, if, he fin if he starts a year like he finished the year, that $2,000 card will become a $1,000 card like that. I mean, it really will. So be careful. Who you're who you're picking um, now? If, if you like a guy, go get him. You know, uh, I've got I've got a good array of quarterbacks uh, that I like, and I'm really not in any any um, hurry to move off of anybody. But I'm thinking about maybe making another purchase. But it's just like, but who? You know, who who do I? I mean, shit. It might just be Mahomes or bust at this point. I mean, really. Um, because he might win the next three or four in a row. You just never know. I mean, who knows? Um, I've talked about the superior fit sleeves. Um, 
repacks, razzing, and breaks. How would you rank repacks, razzing, and breaks in, in uh, terms of like importance to the hobby or legitimacy or long-term uh, staying power? I know that uh, there's been some buzz about breaking and, um, you know, Fanatic's kind of putting um, some rules in place, some limitations, some standards, which I think are all great. Um, they're going to have their own live selling platform at some point, their own live breaking platform. So make become harder and harder for, you know, random guys to break. But I think if I was going to rate the importance or the staying power of repacks, razzing, and breaks, breaks would be at the top. You know, we got to get into these products somehow. These products are high priced. The wax is high priced pretty much across the board. And, and one guy, aside from Sam Noobs, the candy man, uh, can't really afford to go out and bust all this stuff. Um, and so you break it up. And that's how you get into the National Treasures. And that's how you get into the Prism Football. And that's how you get into Flawless and Immaculate and all these great sets that have great cards. But... Um, you know, the, the, the premium that you're going to pay for the chance to pull a really big card out of a flawless box is outrageous. So we need, we need breaks moving forward to continue to fuel the, uh, the whole hobby because without breaks, you would, the, the singles market would come to a, a halt and, um, yeah, the, 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 what do they call it? The velocity of cards would, uh, would come to a screeching halt without breaks and <clears throat> that wouldn't be good. We need, we need uh, liquidity. We need velocity. Uh, we need people buying and selling and ripping and, and, uh, and that whole thing. So breaks are here to stay forever. Uh, and then we need them as far as repacks and razzing are concerned. Um, I think razzing would slot right in at that number two spot, you know, uh, razzing is gambling, uh, plain and simple. You uh, you go after a card, you, you chop that card in however many spots, 10, 20, 50, 100, whatever. And you, you know, it's it, it's it's basically like breaking, except you, you know, instead of opening wax and, and, and chasing an unknown, you know uh, what you're trying to, uh, to, to, to hit. Um, and so as far as uh, liquidity goes, break or razzing is a, is a great way to keep bigger cards uh, selling for good for good money uh, <clears throat> and so um, you know if you like to uh, get a little uh, rush you know throwing a hundred bucks on a thousand dollar card and having a ten percent chance to win it you know more power to you I I can't bring myself to Raz I, I don't know why I just just um, feels like throwing money away but I guess you'd be pretty excited to turn that hundred dollars into a thousand dollar card. I just, I gotta draw. I gotta have certain lines that I draw in my hobby uh, pursuit, and uh, I won't rip, other than cheap boxes for fun, and I won't razz. Uh, and then finally, repacks. Oh my gosh, repacks are a scam. Let me say that again. Repacks are a scam. Let me say it one more time. Repacks are a scam 100% I don't care who's doing the repack I don't care if it's uh, what's that um, what's that repack company that's always the Dallas show buying everybody's stuff uh, I can't I don't know I, ew, I can't remember the company's name but uh, you're there's a reason why they repack and that is to move stale bullshit so when I talk about this a lot, I'll throw it up here again, this baseball lot. Um, there's a couple ways you could sell this, right? Um, you could piece it out on eBay by, with singles, you know, sell them as, a sing as singles. You can do a buy it now uh, and wait. You can do auctions and get slaughtered. Uh, you could repack them. Uh, you could razz them. Um, but let's just take the repack example. Um, here in this instance, I might make the the Vladdy the uh, the chase, um, and let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven cards. Uh, I think the 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 comp value on this is about thirty. I said thirty one hundred. Let's for math's sake, let's say thirty three hundred. 
Uh, and so you're looking at basically uh, 11 boxes or 11 packs at $300 a pack, okay? Uh, if I was going to move this this uh, lot in, in a repack fashion. You open a box, 300 bucks. you pull this Kyle Tucker, hey, not bad, you know, not, not bad. Maybe you could find it, um, you know, maybe it cost you a little bit more if you went uh, on my slabs or eBay and tried to find this card. Maybe it cost you 500 I think the last comp on it was 900 but it was back in 2022. So um, you'd, you'd do well uh, if you pulled that Kyle Tucker at 300 <clears throat> Either one of those Cabrian Hayes, you, you're losing 100 bucks. Uh, Cody Bellinger, you're losing 100 bucks. both of them. Uh, Harrison Bader, you're losing 200 bucks on both of those. Uh, Alec Bohm, you're losing 150 bucks. Jared Kelnick, you're losing 100 bucks. Uh, the Bregman Cray, you're probably breaking even. Um, and so on the Vladdy, you might have basically got that you hit that card for 300 and you know, maybe you bought it at a half price. Maybe you got it, uh, you know, so that's your hit. Um, but there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys that uh, lose money, two guys that break even, and one guy that basically doubles his money. <clears throat> it just, I just would, I don't know. I just, I just think that, that <laughs> for me, it made sense just to take a little bit of, uh, of a, you know, sell this at a little bit of a discount and move it all at once. Buyer knows what he's getting. Seller knows what he's what he's getting. Um, the cards don't really um, motivate, right, to, to to make the purchase. So that price has to be there. But either way, there's a motive. There's a motivating factor, right, for the buyer and for the seller. Uh, <clears throat> in repacks, the motivating factor is the big hit, the chase, and it just ain't coming. And even if you do hit a card that's worth more than the, the, the price that you paid to, to open the pack or whatever, there's a reason it's in the repack. It's probably got a nine auto or it's probably an unlicensed card or like the, like the Vladdy. Just stay as far away from repacks as you can. <clears throat> there's one repack that I might say, uh, it, you know, if you want, if you must, if you have to do it, this would be the repack to get into. And it's, again, I'll talk about Sam Noobs. Sam, S-A-M, Noobs, N-U-B-Z, the candy man. Um, he's, he's a candy wholesaler. Um, him and his son, Rip. Great guy. I love Sam's content and stuff. But he rips flawless, N-T, first off the line uh, stuff. I mean, just constantly um, going back and forth. Between, uh, he'll, he'll rip uh, Exquisite. He'll rip, uh, you know, um, what's it, Eminence? <clears throat> constantly ripping huge boxes and cases. And then he sits around with all this fluff um, and he's got to do something with it. And so his way of like piecing all that stuff out to, to recoup some money to keep ripping is to do repacks. Um, but there's some really good stuff in there. I mean, he's, he's not just, you know, you're not going to pull, uh, you know, a Harrison Bader first Bowman, um, out of Sam stuff, you're pulling a flawless card and chances are, you know, it could be nice. So, um, anyway, all that to say, if I'm ranking those three, it's definitely, um, breaks, razzing repacks and stay far, far away from repacks. And then lastly, I'll talk about premiums in trading, um, up or down. Um, I was, uh, I'm kind of always, I've always wanted a blue ice, Justin Herbert. And a um, friend of mine um, who's a mover and a shaker in the hobby, I said, hey, listen, if you come across Justin Herbert, Blue Ice 10, well, let me know, you know, see if, see if there's a play to be made there. I mean, it used to be a 20K card. It's not anymore. Last comp on it was 8,100 back in April. So um, a friend uh, contacts me and he, has, he says, hey, I found your uh, Blue Ice Herbert. And I said, sweet. And the guy, he says the guy's willing to trade down on it. Oh, cool. Uh, what What's his number? 10-5. Hmm. 10-5. So, so the last comp on this card is 8,100. But he wants 10-5 in trade. Well, what's he looking for in trade? Well, he's looking for quarterbacks and uh, NBA stars. 
Hmm, quarterbacks and NBA. So very extremely liquid stuff. Okay. Again, if I was trading a bunch of the baseball lot, like stuff like the stale stuff, like that baseball lot I just sold, then I maybe could give you an extra 25, 30% over last comp. But if I'm trading you cards that are basically as good as cash, I'm not expecting you to be right there dead, you know, uh, even with the last comp at 8,100. My offer was nine. I told him, hey, look, uh, can't get to 10, five. But if he wants to look at a trade around nine, and be happy to. Oh, he can't, he can't, can't, can't go that low. Like, no, he's not interested. Well, okay. The point being is, <clears throat> you know, at eighty one hundred, if you're if you're if you're um, selling that card at eighty one hundred online, you're gonna take like sixty nine hundred home, right? After after the fees or whatever, fifteen percent fees. And that's pretty standard across the board, whether it's uh, you know eBay or one of the auction houses. Um, and so you go from sixty eight hundred, which that last seller netted, to nine k in trade, which if you take eighty five percent of nine k, you're looking at nine hundred half thirteen fifty. So you're looking at what seventy eight hundred. So you're still doing about a thousand dollars better. Um, by trading at the 9K than the last guy did by selling at 8,100. And the response that I got was, well, hey, there's a premium for trading up. And that used to be the case. That used to be the case when you wanted to go after a bigger card and you were going to trade, let's say, five or six cards up into a $10,000 card. You know, it was fair to ask for 11, 11, five, maybe even 12, depending on the quality of your uh, cards you're trading up into. <clears throat> but nowadays in this market, these big, huge cards are bulky. They're hard to get rid of. They're hard to liquidate. Get rid of seems a bit harsh. They're hard to liquidate. Uh, people are being more careful, uh, especially on a guy like Herbert, who, you know, if Herbert, like I talked about earlier, being on that quarterback tree, if Herbert goes out, and struggles at all. His the, the, was what once was an eighty one hundred dollar card maybe becomes a fifty five hundred dollar card, and it happens like that. You're hoping at eighty one hundred that he comes out hot and it can get up into the ninety five ten k range, right? But if you're already asking for ninety five ten k because you want a premium on the trade up. What's the incentive for the guy that's trading liquid stuff up into a card that has no business being, you know, 9,500 to, to, to 10.5? Um, unless you're a Herbert guy and you're just in it because, like me, like with the Luca Blue Ice, you know, that made sense. Now, I didn't, I mean, I got a steal on that card, but, uh, I, you know, if I was trading up, I traded one for one. But if I was trading up, um, I would have probably been happy to give a little bit more. Um, I did that on the uh, Cracked Ice uh, Contenders Luka Auto that I have uh, because he's my guy, right? Um, but uh, just know that if you're trading up, again, it depends on the stuff you're trading. If it's stuff like this baseball lot, it's a little more stale and it's not going to snap, sell, you might have to give the 10.5, right, on a Herbert that lasted 81. But if you're talking about an orange, George, uh, an orange Joe Burrow PSA 10 Prism rookie, if you're talking about, you know, a Luca uh, Silver PSA 10 rookie, if you're talking about, um, you know, a Justin Herbert Silver PSA 10 rookie, or a Trevor Lawrence silver PSA 10. If you're talking about really, really liquid star rookie cards, then I think that it, you need to be a little higher than the last comp, but I could even see it being a, a flat, like lateral move. Like there's not a previous, so you get as close to the last comp as you can, um, <clears throat> but but this, this whole notion of trading, paying more to trade up, um, just isn't, the, it, it isn't where the hobby's at at the moment. Doesn't, doesn't mean it can't get back there. Because I think everyone is trying to uh, consolidate up 
if you're a collector and you want to hold a collection of nice cards. So that's about it. Uh, that was a lot. Um, but I appreciate you guys hanging out. Like I said, it's been a minute. I was excited to get up uh, and do a little uh, video for y'all and just share some thoughts. Um, yeah, but let me know if you have any um, pushback or a comment or anything about what I've talked about. Drop in the comments. I appreciate it. Have a good national if you're going. I'll be at Dallas in a couple weeks. Uh, let me know if you're going to be in Dallas. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.